The Conservative Party conference has produced many odd little sideshows. Pretty Patel and Nigel Farage belting out Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Top Loader doing a special performance just for the Tories. Liz Trust reportedly hitting Canal Street and shaking a tail feather to Kylie. According to TikTok, it was padam padam. But the weirdest bit of all, the weirdest sight of all, has to be the cohort of young Tories who have descended on Manchester. Owen Jones came across a few, starting with this chap who didn't seem to be too upbeat. What are the Tories' proudest domestic achievements last 13 years that you're proud of, that you've achieved? Not much. I really, yeah. Really? There's nothing I can really say. I mean, Brexit-ish. One thing that really shocked me about that is young Tories are wearing mullets now. I don't think that should be allowed. They've assimilated. They're walking among us. The mullet is meant to be our thing. You can't have a mullet. You have to have a stupid bowl cut. Learn the rules. Um, but with that young guy, despite seemingly having a clearish eye when it came to Tory failures, he then threw Owen a real curveball. Who would you like to take over from Rishi Sunak? I don't know. Well, I've got all these things for new Conservatives. None of these are particularly in the running for the leadership. Are you Lincoln Smith again? No. <laughs> Check his mog? Well, that'd Is be it? fun, but it's not likely to happen. Would you think it'd be fun? Oh, I think it'd be quite fun. Would you vote for him? I think so. Seriously? I think I might. Do you think it, mm. Tories would win under him? No, but it's not like they're going to win under Ricky Sunak anyway. It's a real shame, because that kid seems, you know, funny. He's charming. He seems pretty switched on. And then he bag, like backs Jacob Rees-Mogg for the Tory leadership for the fun of it. Like, I'm, I'm not even here to quibble with his politics, because they're his politics and I want to patronise him. But this is one of the problems with Westminster politics. We're encouraged to see it like a game from the beginning. I remember my own brushes with student politicians at university. Thankfully, I never got involved with the NUS. But everyone took themselves so bloody seriously. But the politics, the business of politics, wasn't taken seriously at all. It was a load of 18-year-olds trying to their best to live out the Mac, like the Prince by Machiavelli, which I I can assure you it was not a dignified endeavour for anyone. And that is how you get the likes of Wes Streeting rising up the ranks until their health secretary. Because they're seeing, you know, the people who see politics as a game are the ones who are allowed in and allowed to play it. And the ones who actually live and breathe politics as a real thing that affects their lives. Not getting anywhere near there. However, the Moglets, as I'm calling them, weren't the only young Tories out and about. BBC News met one young conference attendee embarking on a valiant campaign to reclaim an old insult. I acquired this badge two years ago from the fantastic Deanna Davidson and it was really reclaiming the narrative that of, of Tory scum and the abuse that gets hurled at us and the derogatory, racist, homophobic and misogynistic labels that get chucked our way all because people don't see that we align with what they're what they think we should believe just because we're young or just because we're a woman or just because we're part of the LGBT community or just because you're from a certain ethnic background. And really, it's just reclaiming that term as something that's not abuse that you can hurl at me. I'm, I'm sat there reclaiming it for myself and weaponising that against you. Quite a feat to weaponise social justice language to defend your right to be a Tory like it's a protected characteristic, uh, especially given the rhetoric that's coming out of Tory ministers across the conference. Suella Braverman's speech alone validates a lot of the isms that's thrown towards the modern Tory party. I just think it's fascinating to see the new generation of Conservatives, because these young people are coming of age, like coming of political age, with a very different Conservative party than the one I grew up with, for example. From the jump, they are on board with the hardline rhetoric and this sleight of hand opposite world tactics where, you know, Rishi Sunak is saying they're making long-term decisions when actually they're making short-term decisions. And Suella Braverman says, you know, woke people accuse us of being this and that, but we're actually the ones who are standing up for minorities, that kind of stuff. And it's all means opposites. And they're, they're really on board with that. However, that doesn't mean that everyone else is. Here is a sad tale that was shared with The Guardian. The culture wars, it's... It's, it's a real sad situation. Um, I've had a lot of friends that I've had, uh, and they found out I'm conservative one way or another, and they've just said, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I go, well, what's really changed in the last two minutes that, from when you found out to when you were my friend earlier? And then one girlfriend. Yeah, just dumped me. Uh, but... <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to laugh at a youthful person's pain, romantic heartbreak, but that little laugh at the end. <laughs> the thing is, someone is perfectly within their rights to decide that your values don't align 
based upon your political beliefs. You know, the thing that had changed was he, they found out he was a Tory. And that is a big weight to carry because to being a young Tory now, a committed young Tory, and what that entails subscribing to politically, as I said earlier, it's a lot, as proved by this exchange between a young Tory that Owen Jones asked about Enoch Powell. What do you think, Enoch Powell? <laughs> Enoch Powell's obviously a very divisive figure. Yeah. What do you think of him, though? Personally, what I think of him is a lot of stuff he was saying, although very divisive at the time, has come to pass. What, rivers of blood? Not yet, no. No, but do you think that's... But where... massive demographic replacement in some of our biggest cities has occurred. But his prediction was that would cause rivers of blood, like the, the, like the River Tiber, that yes. the streets of Britain would be... Rivers of blood would be ahead. That never happened. No, I didn't say that happened, though, did I? No. What I said is some of what he predicted came true. So I do think he was right on some things in that sense. Some cities are no longer diverse. They are no longer diverse in the sense that there isn't a mix of cultures where it's now be completely replaced by one culture yeah. over another. Like, like where? A lot of boroughs of London where the white working classes have been moved out in exchange for a lot of people from What other... do you mean they've been moved out? Well, a lot of the council slates in central London now in some of those boroughs have been completely demographically changed to a completely alien culture to what it would have been 50 years ago. But what do you mean an alien culture? I mean, in East End, London it used to be very Jewish. And now yes. it's more Muslim, but that's yeah. always been the case. So, I mean, that's so that's a very alien culture to what it was then, isn't it? No, I mean they're British Muslims. Yes, but it's an alien culture. What do you it's mean? It's a different culture. Alien culture means it. Alien, as in unfamiliar. Yeah, but it's not alien to being British. British is being British means you could be Muslim or Jewish or Hindu. I'm not saying it's to being British. I'm saying it's to the culture of the area, to the beliefs and belief structures of the area, to the institutions that once were there being replaced by new institutions now and new beliefs and new ideologies and new cultures and new religions. Well, they're different completely religions, Completely changing course. it. But, yeah, I it's, mean... But a religion is an entire cultural and ideological outlook on the work, world. There's still white working class people who live there who go to school with people from different backgrounds and they mix with people from different backgrounds. They're not monocultures. You still have white working class people in Tower Hamlets. I'm talking about whether or not the native people in those areas feel that they are now in their homeland or if their homeland confronts them as something other, something which distracts them from what they believe themselves to be. Well, I, th I think I, millions of people are actually happy with being diverse. I mean, London has huge numbers of mixed relationships where people from different cultures quite literally set, set families up together. I mean, that's a good thing, surely. I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's neither here nor there. Well, you, I, Diversity is not inherently good, it's not inherently bad, that's not my point. Well, I think it's inherently good, but... Why, just, is, why do you think that? Because I think you get a, an interesting exchange of cultures and worldviews, and that makes for a more interesting and dynamic... Yeah, but why society. does a mix of cultures and worldviews provide something good, necessarily? Because we learn from each other. Yes, but why... Well, let's say there's, there's some archetypal, brilliant worldview, the best possible worldview, right. right? Would you then say, oh, let's make it more diverse and mix it with other worldviews? No. Is a tough issue, tough question to answer, really. That kid whose identity is actually now available, unfortunately, is not from London, doesn't know anything about London, but somewhere he's picked up these ideas, which is very obviously, for those who know, he's parroting the recognisable great replacement theory, uh, which says that, you know, white Europeans are being replaced. It's a far-right nationalist belief White Europeans are being replaced by ethnic minorities via mass migration, demographic changes, and declining birth rates among white people, which is nonsense, of course. And what I find interesting is earlier today, I was thinking about this building in the East London that he mentions. He doesn't mention the building, but he's talking about East London. He's talking about these areas, which I don't think he goes to. He's not from there. I can confirm he is not from London. And I was thinking about this one building in the East End, which is the Brick Lane Mosque. And the Brick Lane Mosque is... You know, the story of the Brooklyn Mosque is amazing. It started in the 1750s as a Huguenot Protestant church. It became uh, a synagogue with waves of migration when Jewish refugees moved to London in the 1800s. And then once there was a wave of um, Bengali immigration in the 70s, it's now a mosque. And that building maintains different features. It's got so much history in it and it sums up that area London's rich history of migration. There's a reason the East End as well is such an amazing space for political organising and radical organising in particular. Partly that's because, you know, lots of um, migrants were shoved in there and made to live in really terrible conditions. So organising emerged out of that. But it's also because there is this rich mix of working class communities who work together. What he's saying about, you know, white families, white working class families leaving urban areas, not actually true. Firstly, 
Inner London, the example he uses, has actually got whiter since 2010. Uh, according to Politics Home Data, the suburbs have actually become more ethnic diverse while inner London is whiter. Why? Because ethnic and mi minority communities are being priced out of London and young families of all ethnicities are leaving the inner city. Research from the Centre for London has this data which shows that decreases of 10% and more of young families who are living in the likes of Tower Hamlets, Southwark, Hackney, and Lambeth. And it's because they can no longer afford to live there thanks to the economic policies of central government, who for the entire time that young man has been coming of age, has been the Conservatives.